Coming up on Unpacked. The cameras are there. This yeah. was your moment. That lady at the front is telling me, I don't think you're going to make it, yes. but you can try. I wasn't used to that, the pressure, that, that mm. type of pressure. That moment where you reach the finals and your name is announced, what did that feel like? Ooh. I think I didn't hear my name. Throughout that entire process, I was just praying, like, Winning a competition reality show is extremely exciting, but also comes with its ups and downs. Our guests are here to share their stories. Let's unpack. Bokale Buikanyo rose to fame after her energetic poetry captured the hearts of South African audiences on the talent reality show, Essays Got Talent. At only 11 years old, she went on to win the competition. Elias Sibata became the winner of fashion reality show Raw Silk in 2018. After competing against 13 other contestants, the designer and creator of the label Note has continued to spread his wings. These are their stories. Let's unpack. Well, Kelly, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And Elias, to you as well, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you very much. So, Bukhali, tell us about where your love of poetry started. Mm, okay, um, so I started poetry at a very young age, so I always feel like poetry found me yes. um, more than anything. So I started poetry when I was six years old. Um, what happened was there was a school concert coming up and my teacher was the one organizing the school mm. concert. So she had a poem that she wanted one of the students to do, so she gave it to like a grade seven student. And I was like, I want to try it too. And yes. she, I don't think she took me seriously, so she was like, I mean, if you can memorize it by Monday, then we can try slot you in. And then during the weekend, my mom was like mixing it all up and I memorized that. And on Monday, the other student didn't know it. So I, yeah, I performed at the school concert and I think that's where it all started for me. At such a tender young age. Yeah, yeah. And what do you remember about that performance? The only thing I remember about the performance was that it was about HIV and AIDS because it was yes. something that was very ripe back then. Um, and more than anything was the standing ovation. I remember yes. when I finished performing, everyone was like on their feet and everyone was clapping. And yeah, something about that moment um, felt right. And it felt like this is something that I want to do. And was it something in your conscience that you were like, uh, I want to do this for fun or, okay, this is like a passion? Yeah, um, I don't think six-year-old me would like yes. be conscious not to be like, mm, it's something I'm passionate about, but I knew that I loved the spotlight. Like even when I was a kid, whenever there was like weddings or funerals or whatever, I wanted people to always be there. I wanted to be center yes, stage. Yes. I would like compose a song. I would be there breaking into a dance. Um, so I always knew that something in the arts was something that I liked. And I guess as I grew older, I started branching into other things such as dancing, such yes. as um, theater. And I think that's where I started seeing that. Yes. Mm, more than anything for me, the this is something I'm passionate about. This is something that feels bigger than myself. Yes, yeah. yes. Elias, where did your love of fashion begin? Yeah, with me, it's, it was a totally different story from hers. Yeah. Um, I, well, I knew, I knew that I wanted to do fashion when I was still young, very young. Mm. Uh, I took it from my mom. Uh, she used to be a seamstress. She used to work for Yamafi mm. and she used to uh, work for big brands and stuff. So every time when she came back home, she used to actually ask me to help her uh, overlocker, to thread the overlocker and cut sometimes. You, know? you were how old at the time? Around about 10, 11. So yeah. those little fingers came handy. Yes, yes. I used to do that. And then uh, sometimes when she didn't have a sitter, she would take me with to the factories and mm. she would actually... They'd actually give me a book and I'd just draw and mm. then it actually grew from there. And then I think I knew what I wanted to do before Kikena High School. Mm. That was, yeah, that's how it actually, yeah. So it's not something that you felt, oh, you were just doing it because your mom is doing it. Doing it. No. You fell in love with it. I fell in love with it straight away because now I used to, it came to a point where I used to steal her machines mm. when she was not around and mm. just patch, do these patch thing, upcycle things. Yes. And then she would see, one day you lump on her, no. Where did you get that? Mm. How did you do it? Then I told her that I actually did that. And mm. she was like, yo, go ask me and then I'll teach you. And then she mm. taught me and then... That's where it started. Mm. Yeah. And how was Dad uh, feeling about the whole thing? Dad, Dad didn't nasabati like, at all. Dad was mm. like, no son of mine is going to be a designer. I guess there was a stigma attached to it. Or no, if you're a designer, you're going to be 
gay or mm. something. It was that. So more than anything, it was just that for mm. him. He was like, no, do engineering. Skaroka. Skaroka, you mm. know. If you, if you don't want to do this, then I'm not going to pay for your tuition. Mm. I'm not going to do it. But I had my mom and my, brothers to actually, my brother to actually mm. uh, help me with that. Okay, so now um, at what point did you get introduced to the idea of entering a reality show? Was this you, you know, you being actually done with school and having started pursuing fashion or was it prior to, to pursuing fashion no, professionally? No, because I did, fa well, I'm, I'm going to reveal my age now. <laughs> I, did, <laughs> I did fashion in 2007. Mm -hmm. I did fashion in 2007, graduated in 2010. 10, I mm. think I did, yeah, 2008, 9, 10, yeah. Mm. And then uh, did my own brand, started my own brand while I was still in school. Mm. And then we traveled while I was still in school. Yes. I actually, we should actually punk school just to go to uh, attend other fashion shows yes. like Mpumalangas and your whatnots. Mm. And then with funny story, so it was second year. Mm. So uh, we had an opportunity to actually enter Mpumalanga Fashion Week. Mm. But we were still in school. Yes, and so they you didn't know. couldn't. Bonani was at yes. So we entered as established designers. Mm. And then they were like, cool. So we went there without even telling my our parents mm. and the, uh, school, the school. And then when we went there, we showcased, we killed it. It was nice. Because they thought maybe it was a school thing. Mm. And then coming back was an issue because we never time only for like a week. Mm. Nah, nah, a week of no school. Yes. When we came back, we thought we were in trouble, but no, we were not because now they saw us on TV. Wow. They go top. Yes. So that was that was that was the best thing ever. Uh, and then I think that's when my father understood what I was doing and why I was doing it, mm. because now, boy, now we're okay. Okay, he's actually serious about it. Mm. But uh, fast forward. Uh, yes, I I was established mm. before entering the competition, mm. but it wasn't me who entered the competition mm. for me. It was my sister. My mm. sister actually entered the competition for me because Cassie's in wine. She actually asked me, we were watching on TV, and then she was like, would you actually do this? I'm mm. like, yeah, yeah, I think I'm, I, yeah, I, I could, you know. And, and we're then, referring to raw silk. Yes. Yes. And then the second season, the following year, she decided to enter for me. Mm. And then uh, I just got a call. Nick my kids, I just got a call. Like, oh, okay, cool. I alias kiss mang mang wako ro silk and whatnot. Mm. Uh, you, you, are, you are selected for, for, for a video uh, mm. and don't, don't need to shoot. And then from there you send it. And then mm. we, we will tell you if you've, enter, you've, 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 you've reached the finals yes. and whatnot. And then that's what happened. Mm. Mm. And on your side, Abukhal, how did you get introduced to, you know, this competition show, Essays Got Talent? I was watching TV and I saw the ad for Essays Got Talent. Mm. And I was like to my mom um, that I'd really like to enter. And she was um, equally as enthusiastic. Because for me as a kid, it was like, mm, it would be like that one moment on TV. Like, I never yes. know who's watching. I never know what it could lead to. So mm. for me, when I was entering, I was like, I just want to be on TV. I never yes. know who'll see me on TV. And, and you were how on, old at this point? I was 11 years old. Yes, yes. I was yes. 11 years old. From then on, we entered the competition. Um, and I remember we drove all the way from Mafiging um, um, to Joburg and we got here like really early. It was like in the AMs and it was like like June, so it was really, really cold. Yes. Um, and at like 2 a.m., like the line was so long and yes. my dad was like in the queue um, while we waited. And when I got in, um, lucky enough, I was actually auditioned by one of the producers of the actual show mm. um, because when I got there, they were like, poetry... Not We're a not big so sure. Thing. They're yes. like, we've never had a poet on the show. Um, that lady at the front is telling me, I don't think you're gonna make it, yes. but you can try. Like, yes. um, and I was actually disappointed already because I thought like the first, you know, like when you watch it on TV, mm. um, you think that that first edition is like the first the moment. First edition, so I'm like, yes. why are we going into a room? Like where are the yes. cameras and everything. Yes. Um, but yeah, so um, I was auditioned by one of the producers. Like she's like, okay, we've never had a poet and you're mm. also really young. So I don't know how this will go, but you're really yes. good. Um, but I can't, I can't say anything. Mm. And then weeks went by and I remember I was at school 
when I got the call, I got called into the principal's office and I was like a really good child in school. Yeah. So I was so scared <laughs> as to like, why am I being called to the yes. principal's office? What did I do? And I remember I literally waited the whole day and only went like after school. Yes. Um, and that's when I got the call actually that um, you've been selected and would like for you to come into the first round of mm. auditions um, of the live show. Um, and I remember the only requirement was that I needed to do um, a poem by like an established poet yes. um, because they still wanted to play it safe because yes. they never had a poet on the show. But I was like, sure thing. I'm really yes. excited at the opportunity. And I remember um, that first moment I did a poem by Marion Williamson, Auntie mm. Pasia, which was always one of my favorite pieces. So mm. yeah, that's where it started for me. And then for you, you know, your sisters entered you. So when did you find out that how this person's entered you and you're being invited to participate? Um, I can't remember when. Mm. Uh, but I remember the call. I was chilling with my boys, mm. just chilling. Uh, one of my boys is a producer, so he was just making music, we were just chilling, and then I got a call, and then I went out, and then they told me, yo, you are on the top 15 now. Yes. From top 15, we'll tell you for a... But mm. they were just playing around. Okay, yes. you are in, you are not in. You're not sure. Don't worry. Mm. We'll call you. Don't mm. relax. You know. You know. Yes. And then I was like, you know what? This is not gonna happen. I, I was like, ah, it's not gonna happen. Did you want it to happen at this point, though? Yeah. Even though I didn't, I, I didn't. I, I, I'm not the one who entered. Mm. Uh, but I, I was. The idea was just there. I was like, yo, now that I'm here, let's do it. Yes. Let's yes, do yes. it. I'm, I'm all for it. You know. Mm. I've got nothing to lose, you know, why not? Let's do it. So when did they then call you to say you're in? They took his card. They took mm. a lot of time because mm. they said, we'll call you tomorrow, Cabo 8. If I don't nearly after 8, then we'll say, I don't know. So they called me, Cabo 9. Mm -hmm. And then when they called, I was at home. And then when they called, I knew already for Kikeni. Excitement. My mom was happy. Mm. Everyone was just excited. My sister, mm. we were just happy, yeah. Um, so what was your understanding at the time of what the show could do for you? Because, you know, what Kyla said for her, she just like, if I just get seen, go TV. Yeah. What was it for you? With me, it wasn't even, because I've been, I've, I've, it wasn't my first uh, rodeo, you know, yes. be, I, I know all these things, but with me it was more of, I just want to kick ass. Yes. That, that was just me. I just want to actually make my mom proud. Mm. I want to make my grandmother proud. Because mm. she's never, oh, every time I can look at TV, but I come on. Yes. I come on, you know. Yes. So I'm like, okay, this time at least, if I could just chill there for like a month or, or more, because mm. we were there for like six weeks, I yes. think. Yes so that my grandmother can see me on TV. Mm. So that was it. More okay. Mm, mm. Yeah. So, Bukali, you go now, you do your first performance. Yes. And this is now, the cameras are there. This yes. was your moment. Yes. Talk us through what that experience was like. Ooh. Especially um, because they had already said to you, Are Shoka yes. poetry. Yes. You know what? I really don't think um, that... Um, affected me at all, honestly. Um, I think 11-year-old Bakali was very, very confident. And yes. she was bold. I remember when I stepped onto stage, I already had like an intro like, Bakali is my name, the representation of who I am. Bakali, my name, the introduction <laughs> of flame. And that's how I entered the yes. stage. And everyone was like, whoa, like yes. who's this little kid? Um, and I remember I did the entire poem and from my first audition, I got a standing ovation. Wow. So that was amazing. And then one of the judges was like, I would really encourage you to actually write your own poetry. Yes. And I said, this is my opportunity. Yes. I was like, I write my own poetry. And they're like, would you like to share? And I got to share my own poem. And from then on, um, with all the other stages of the competition, yes. I was able to then do my own work instead. Yes. So that was a door opener for me because now I was able to come in as Bukhali the poet and not doing other people's work. So yes. yeah, that was the first moment for me. If you, you know, had to describe to people who are not au fait with poetry, how would you describe your style of poetry um, in terms of the writing? I think more than anything, I am more of a praise poet. I think I lean more towards praise poetry. Yes. Although there's certain moments or certain 
times where it might feel like a bit of slang. So I think yes. it, it really depends on the mood. But more than anything, whenever I people listen to my poetry more than anything, I want them to feel some sort of light, mm. some sort of hope. Um, yeah, in every single situation, whether I'm talking about you or whether mm. I'm talking about a situation that doesn't feel as bright, yes. I want to bring hope. So yes. I think more into praise, praise poetry more than yes. anything. Yes, yeah. And for you... Um, in terms of when you entered the competition, because mm -hmm. obviously they put you through different rounds of different yeah, challenges. Yeah. But in the in your real life, what style of fashion were you into prior to being put into that situation? Personally or personally? Uh Asian aesthetic. Mm. Um I'm more drawn into Asian aesthetic. More than anything. So explain what you mean, because to me, my mind goes to kimonos. Yes, and then your mind is right. <laughs> your mind is spot on. <laughs> I'm more yes. into loose fitted stuff, yes. uh, wraps, kimonos. Yes. I'm laid back. I'm mm. easy. My personality is like that. So yes. it's that's who I am. Yes. Yeah. Yes. From graduation, my last show was actually inspired by the Japanese. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, when yes. I graduated. So it's I like always this. been that, yeah. Yes. So it's a bit of an Asian Afro kind yes, of yes, fusion yes, that happens. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So for you, uh, what was your first round like? Because this is now your first time mm. having to compete with other people on a clock. It's not like a fashion week where you have time. They're like deadline, challenge, there's going to be judges and go. For the first one, I think they, they was, it was a test. It wasn't even, you, you mess up, you leave. Mm. But we didn't know that, I guess. Yes. So we had to do, we had to, they teamed us up with people. We mm. don't even know, mm. or a, is this one a slack, or a slack, or yes. this one, you know, uh, a worker, or a lang. And then, uh, it was tough because now they didn't give us much. Mm. They just gave us minimal stuff like, okay, you want to use these things. Yes. And your inspiration is, I think it was June 16. Mm. Yeah, I think it was June 16. Yes, it was June mm. 16. They took us to Gold Reef, mm. the museum, and then we just draw inspiration from that. And then they say, come back from there. You want to make an outfit mm. inspired by that. And then, mm. boom, let's go. Ew. <sighs> Why? As I thought I was Why? leaving. I was like, yo, I'm leaving here yeah, today. Kavaya, Kavaya today, you know? Because I wasn't used to that, the pressure, that, that mm. type of pressure. I'm used to pressure, but that type of pressure, I thought, okay, from here, we take you here, from here, you're going to do this, and then it needs to be finished by tomorrow. Tomorrow, mm. if it's done, when they say it sees us down, it sees it's us done. down. Mm. Mm. If you are finished or you're not finished, it's done for you. Mm. So that's what, that's what happened. And it was very challenging. I think uh, it took some time for me to actually uh, get the rhythm right, mm. you know, mm. relax, uh, composure, you know, work with people, be able to, you know, it was that. Mm. And then after that, I was, I was cool. I think after the first, epi after the first challenge, I was okay. Yeah. 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 But the first one was, it was difficult. Yeah. Because we all were scared. Horror. No one wants to be the first one to leave. That's yes, you know yes. I mean? Yeah. Did you find, Bukhali, for yourself that um, because the genre of entertainment you were doing was, um, you know, not mainstream, that yes. you actually had an edge over the other people's talents? Mm, not, 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 not quite. I don't think quite at the beginning because at the beginning it felt like more of a disadvantage yes. that I'm doing something different and other people are here singing, they're yes. dancing, they're doing things that people are used to seeing. Yes. But I think there was a bit of a confidence booster yes. even more after the first performance that maybe what may set me apart may actually be an advantage, yes. so I guess, right after the first one. But before, I wouldn't quite say that. Yes. I'm like, mm, okay, they're saying I'm the first forward. I'm the youngest person here, yes. so maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> so how did the next couple of rounds go? Because already, you know, Elias has explained that it got easier for him. Did yes. it get easier for you or did it just become harder? Um, funny enough, though, I think because um, I was focused on that first moment. Mm. And for me, 
when I was entering the competition, it was for that first moment on yes. TV. I hadn't even thought about like making it pass, yes. you know what I'm saying? And with everyone, I realized that everyone actually had routines for like the next four rounds. They had and songs. You for, didn't and have. I'm here like, I only prepared a poem. Like yes. I was here yeah, for that one moment and never did I think I would make it past. But I think more than anything, poetry has always been a God-given talent. Mm. Um, so for me, being able to write, being able to perform mm. was always easier because yes. it felt like something that I didn't have to search too yes. much for. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it was happening weekly. It was happening as time was going. Yes. Me and my mom were writing and we were practicing in that hotel room and we would make it on stage all the time. Do you, yeah. do you think actually it, it, it worked to your benefit that you didn't over-prepare before? Maybe, maybe it might, because I remember there was even a time when um, one of my favorite performances of the entire show was the Nelson Mandela poem that I did. Yes. And I remember at some point we thought, maybe we should keep this for the final. And yes. we're like, no, we're actually going to be living for every single yes. moment of the yes. competition. So let's do it now. We'll figure out the finals yes. if we make it to the finals. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So I think part of that was exciting because I didn't sit... Um, I was living for that moment and some, mm. some contestants I feel were still waiting, they were still yes. saving things up yes. for that big moment. And I'm like, let's make every single time on stage a big moment. Yeah. I think that was it for me, yeah. And I think that's a very uh, strong strategy that you went with. So that moment where you reach the finals and your name is announced, what did that feel like? Ooh. I think I didn't hear my name. I didn't hear them call. I did, I got to hey guys! I just, I don't know what happened. I just zoned out, Hanyani. Yes. And then I looked at everyone else and I, they were all looking at me and then I started, I just, yes. I was emotional. Yes. It, was, it, was, it was a beautiful moment. I, I, I'll never forget that moment yes. ever. It was, it was beautiful. And I couldn't believe, I think three, three episodes before, before the finals, I, I, I had a thing. Next day, I think I, I stand a good chance of winning this. Yes. Because I, I had two ladies. There was two <clears throat> ladies. Nikhil Modi finally lead two ladies, mm. and I was the only guy. So I was like, you know what? Actually, I, I think I, I'm going to take this. Mm. I think I'm going to take this. And when I took it, I couldn't believe it. Yes. Little day. It Even though me. you thought, you still <laughs> couldn't believe it. <laughs> Like, it took me, I, I didn't even cry. I was emotional, yes, but tears couldn't come out. I think uh, it took me months after. It actually sunk in after three three months or something like that. Mm. Then I cried alone mm. in my room, and I was like, wow, I actually won. Mm. Mm. And I couldn't believe, you know. My grandmother was happy. She <laughs> saw me on TV finally. You know, my mom gave me a big kiss when I got home. It was, it was, it was, it was beautiful. Yeah. Very beautiful. But Kelly, take us to that moment when you won. I think similar <coughs> to you, um, I remember the, the, when, cause I think it was like a top three and yes. they did a top two and then they announced the winner. I remember throughout that entire process, I was just praying. Like yes. in my head, I was just praying. I was just praying. I was just praying mm. that when they announced my name as well, it feels like, a second, and then you're like, wait, that's my name. Yes, that's yeah, me. Yeah, like that's me. And then <clears throat> um, everything else happens with um, people coming up and your family and everything. And it feels surreal. It really mm. feels surreal. I think in that moment, I was honored, man. I was honored yeah. that so many people believed yeah. in me, so many people believed in my craft. I was honored that God allowed me such a platform and yes. saw me fitting to be able to make it all the way. I think for me, when it fully started settling in was when I went back home because yes. it was like an entire like homecoming. Yes. And so many people came and there were like motorbikes and cars and posters. And it was like, man, like more than anything, it wasn't just a win for me. It was a win for small town Botaling, who yes. never thought she'd make it, man. Yes. Um, and my parents and everyone, I think that's when it all started settling in, when I could see how other people were celebrating this. Mm. Um, it was a personal win for everyone. Mm. And mm. it was, it was yeah, it was surreal. It was surreal. How much did you win in your uh, competition? 100 Ma Money, money, okay. cash money. 100 k Baba. Cash money. <laughs> and we'll tell you how much did you win? Cash. I won 250K. Mm. Cash money. Cash and you were 11 <laughs> at the yeah, time. Yeah. You were 11. What did you do with your money? Spanish, Artinicala, 
helped out at home and then the rest I invested mm. back to myself. Yes. Business and stuff. Yes. Because uh, after that, I had to actually do Fashion Week. Mm. So I entered Fashion Week and I did that. Yes. Yes, I've always wanted to do Fashion Week. So now I've got the money, why not? Yes. So I did that and yeah, I was happy. How did an 11 year old spend <laughs> 250,000 Rand? <laughs> like my money was put into like a investment account. Yes. And I guess when I was older, it's just gone to school. So yes. That's yes. Like me. Yeah. So it went back to your education, was reinvested into yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's it for do you think that your life would have turned out different if you didn't do the, the TV show? Hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I know one thing about me, though, is that... So <laughs> I, 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 I grew up Goma Figing. Yes. And I grew up with my grandmother and cousins and in such an environment. And... Um, I remember one thing I knew for sure was that I needed to make it out of here. Yeah. I didn't want to be stuck in the cycle of poverty. I, yes. I didn't want to be such. So initially, I thought it was going to be through my academics. Yes. So I used to push academically. Like for me, I was already researching bursaries of like high schools and mm. job work and whatever. Mm. So I needed to make it out. I guess I never thought it would be the arts that would get me mm. out of there. But I knew that I was destined for more than this. I didn't yes. want to fall into the cycle of teenage pregnancy, of abuse of anything, I really mm. wanted to be different. So, yeah, it was going to be either way for me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. For you, um, how do you think life would have been different if your sister hadn't entered you into the competition? I mean, I was already in the industry. Mm. It's not like uh, uh, Raw Silk put me there. Yes. I was already there. I was already doing what I love already, yes. you see. So it wouldn't... Me being a fashion designer, me making it in the industry it was inevitable. Yes. Like, I still wasn't going to do it. So yes. there was just uh, a cherry on top mm. or just to see, because a lot of people didn't know who I was, yes. what I did, who Benyenz and Van mm. Gwenzagalani. Mm. And then when they saw me, they were like, I didn't know he was a designer. Yes. You know? So it was that. But Jinji, I'll, I'll, I'll still be doing this. Mm. I would still be a designer, still be dressing people, still mm. be pushing my brand. Because I had established, I went in Russell uh, uh, as an established uh, yes. designer, yeah. What are some of the pressures and the downsides of the whole experience and winning? I think as a person, after winning mm. or after, people put you on a pedestal, put, put you so high that you... Mm. They make you feel like you need to act in a certain way. You need to mm. be this person. You need to uh, live the certain life. Mm. You need to do certain things. Those are the pressures that comes with that. Mm. Mara and Jinji, other than anything, it's 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 fun because now everyone knows you. Yes. Uh, as soon as you enter somewhere. Sometimes we get a mahala somewhere, mm. you know, some people can call you, you go into a fabric store, they're like, Elias, Elias, Elias. Mm. You're like, oh, okay, this is nice, you know. But the downfall is just uh, just, just society, mm. you know, and what people, the pressures that people put on, on you. Mm. That's, it's just that. What are some of the downsides and the pressures of the experience that you went through and the winning as well? Yeah, um... I think when I was still young, I didn't necessarily feel like um, I had pressures. I think my parents sheltered me a lot. Yes. Um, but I think I started realizing them more when I was older. But I mm. think it's the same for any single person who is like in the spotlight mm. or who's in the industry. But I think it was worse for me because I came as young Bukhali who was inspiring the mm. kids. And I started becoming, I guess, a role model for young mm. people. Um, I think... Like you said, people forget that you're human. Yes. Um, anyone in the spotlight is human. You are learning as you go. Mm. You're also making mistakes. Um, and yeah, there's a pressure to be perfect and yes. to be their kids' role models. And it's mm. like, that's a lot. <laughs> that's yes. a lot. Um, but For one person to carry. Yeah, mm. yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. But I mean, I guess yeah. that's what we signed up for. So. And you are how old now? I'm currently 20. So, I mean, th this was a while ago, but yeah. the crazy thing is you are still young. Yeah. You are still young. Yes. What do you hope for your future? I really hope that it all works out. 
Um, I think in a simple statement, I really think that it, I hope it all works out. I guess that I was launched into the arts at a mm. very young age. And now I'm like finding my feet as a as I'm stepping into oh, like yeah. being older and finding things that I like as well. Um, so I really just hope that it all works out, man. I really love what I'm doing. I love being in the arts. I've mm. found myself in different spheres. Even now I'm like studying behind the scenes mm. and I'm loving directing. So yeah, all I can hope is that it works out. I think mm. that's it. What do you hope for? Wow, well, travel. I would love to actually showcase outside of the country, um, open up stores. Uh, uh, be the best uh, designer that I want to be. Yes. But before the designer that I want to be, uh, I'm an artist. So mm. I want to actually tap into other, you know, ventures, other things like your your art. I love art. Other into disciplines, art. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, into art. I love art. Uh, I love music before art, mm. before fashion. It was music. My mom, my parents thought I was going to be a musician, mm. Harley. Because I used to perform Gadi, Bo Michael Jackson, and all mm. these things. So I always sing. I annoyed them. Yo, it's all singing, yeah, but uh, yeah, I might do music, I might mm. do uh, art, I might do uh, acting. Mm. It's, I don't want to box myself. Yes. Yeah, but it's, it's just me. It's things that I've always wanted to do as a child. Mm. And then I'm just ticking them one by one. Mm. Yeah. Your various forms of expression. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Well, look, it's it's such a pleasure to be speaking to the both of you. I think that the environment you placed in, just the fact that first it's a competition and secondly that it's been broadcast on television, mm. um, creates an unnatural environment. It's not real life, but it prepares you for real life in a way that, that other people will never have that experience and they won't get those tools that you guys got to now go out into the world. So I wish you both the, the absolute best in your careers and in your different art forms. And I think it's so exciting that you took the plunge to go and expose that, you know, your name being called out for elimination and having to wave go TV <laughs> and, you know, cry to the camera at the end about not making it. But congratulations to the both of you and all that you've achieved. Thank, thank, you, thank you so much for joining much. us. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. <laughs> Hashtag unpacked with Rilebukhile. What do you think about the discussion that we have had today? Both of our guests took the plunge of entering a reality competition show for all to see countrywide. Would you have the guts to do the same thing? Because it isn't just about singing. There are many different art forms that may not have as big of a platform as music competition shows. And they are equally, if not more, challenging and with their own forms of pressures and competition. But so exciting that we got to speak to them today. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night. Next time on Unpacked. You, have, you can't have kids. I'm sorry to say this. You cannot have kids mm. anymore. I was shattered. I don't want to lie. I just woke up in the morning in pain. Mm. My back, my stomach. What? <laughs> he said, yeah, um, it looks like you're going to give birth today. I said, wait, what do you mean I'm going to give birth? That's when I found out I was pregnant. I just found out from there. Wow. The, the, first, the one thing that crossed my mind was, I'm not keeping this baby. much for watching Unpacked with Rilip Khile Mamoja. Make sure you subscribe to my channel where you can get to watch more episodes. But more importantly, you can be part of our online community. Comment down below, share with us who you'd like to see on the show, what story you'd like us to discuss. We love engaging with you. Keep it coming and don't forget to subscribe.